Hey guys, how we doing? Rough Rooster Knife Sharpening. <clears throat> I want to show you guys something tonight that I've never uh, shown you before or even really mentioned, maybe. Uh, so, our candidate is a little Frontier Trapper. Uh, I picked this guy up at the flea market for 10 bucks, And it's, it's still got plenty of snap left to it. Yeah, I mean, it's a good little knife. And you can see whoever had this knife, they, they pretty well knew how to sharpen. They took care of it. You can see where they started sharpening back here towards the back, up from the, the plunge grind right here. That's all right. I mean, that's pretty good. They laid it way back, you know, which isn't too bad. But a um, little knife like this, uh, isn't intended to, to do a lot of heavy cutting with so I'm going to show you guys or show you guys how to relieve a bevel or how I do it um, and those of you that, that don't understand all the technical terms yet the bevel is right here where you see my fingernail this is all the bevel and then you have your primary grind and your secondary grind. So, <clears throat> as you sharpen a knife, obviously the, the steel goes down further and further, which means it gets thicker and thicker. In this case, this is a full flat grind. And uh, John Jarich talks about this in his book. Uh, what the heck is the name of that book? I'll figure it out and put it in one of my following videos. Give me a swig real quick. So, I'm going to use the large stone holder and I should have dug this out beforehand, but it didn't. Sorry. silicon carbide stone we'll do it like they used to do back when minus the um, stone holder I tell you what I'm going to do a video on these but if you guys don't have a stone holder and you freehand, you need one. So, uh, where the heck did I do the oil? Found it. Okay, so a lot of people just absolutely pool oil up all over their stones, and I don't do that. That's about what we're going to need, maybe just a little bit more. I'm using some old uh, Indian Mountain Wet Zones oil. I've had it for a long time. Like I said, I haven't you know, really used oil on my stones other than these in quite some time. But uh, this stuff can still be had on eBay. I actually found a whole case of it. I should have bought, and it was like next to nothing. It's like fifteen dollars for the whole case. But in the meantime, it's another Dan's product. Dan's honing oil. You can see how thin that stuff is. I'll show. Look here. This, this is lapidary oil. It's what they use to cut gems and everything with. And this is Dan stuff. Dan's is just, a, I think, just a little bit thicker, but it's pretty dang close. And that, that's some really good stuff. I've used it uh, before, and I kind of like it. I might actually dedicate a couple Arkansas stones to, to oil, but 
Well, we'll see. All right, so let's set this over here. Give me another swig before I start. Okay, so what we want to do, kind of, sort of, we want to narrow this bevel behind the edge, which the reason I chose this knife, it's already kind of been done to it. Um, I actually think that was from, you know, somebody doing this, which is fine. But I'm going to do just a little bit of work here on this. You can see towards the back, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it hasn't been done there at the back of the blade. So we're going to go ahead and do it here. What I'm doing, I'm putting the knife like this and kind of rolling up. So I'm doing like a reverse convex, I guess you could say. And when you're doing stuff like this, guys, check your progress often, you know, because you don't want to grind away the good part of your knife. And you guys can see already there. Uh, fix that so I'm gonna do the same thing over here and this this is what I'm talking about about you know getting some little cheap flea market knives and experimenting with because you know a lot of you guys on here or either getting back into freehanding, I've come to find out, or learning how to freehand. And I mean, that's fine. Just uh, do it on something cheaper. Don't do it on something real good. Figure out what you're doing on a, on a cheaper blade in case you bugger it up. I need to tighten that blade up a little bit. It's not too bad, but I guess I should make a video on how to do that as well. So what we're doing right now, we're not sharpening. <clears throat> we are reshaping, reforming, repairing, whatever you like to call it. Let me get the back of this just a little bit more. So you guys will be able to see what I've done here in just a minute. Okay. So this little knife when I get done, it's going to be pretty damn keen. Um, you guys can can see here what I've done and what this is going to do is it's going to improve the cutting abilities of this knife I said check your progress often even if you've been doing this for a long time like I have you'll booger a knife up quick especially with silicon carbide on carbon okay so let's see I'm having just a little bit of trouble forming that tip in but that's all right I broke my own rule here so when you're doing like tip work, um, like I'm doing here, use an un, unused part of your stone, like this part right here, back here, up here, because you that part of the stone is always higher when all this right here wears. So you're getting the most out of your stone.
And I should have mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is a medium uh, crystal on. You can see right there. And it's coarse, but it's not that coarse. I want to say that's like, I don't know, 320 grit, 300 grit, something like that. It's it's like a really fine coarse, if that makes sense. So, you can see the other side here. So essentially, we have made a convex edge. Uh, if I keep going like that, um, we would get a pretty sharp edge. It can be done like that. There's a lot of people that sharpen backwards. I haven't seen anybody do it in a long time, but it's not to say anybody don't do it. Um, some of these guys. Slashed my beer. Sorry. But some of these guys, they do this shit and I can't stand it. They'll go like this and work it back and forth. And that's how they sharpen. You know, I'll do that sometimes like, like if I'm trying to cut down uh, a bevel. Just like I did a reshape, but that's that's senseless. So now that we've got it repaired the way that we want to, well, not necessarily repaired, um, shaped the way that we want to, we're going to go ahead and do a reprofile on it. Remember, it's always important to start back here by the choil. Run your choil about three or four inches and push on out. This is one reason that I recommend a longer stone. Uh, we should have a nice little burr there. Nope, we don't. If you guys don't know, Imperial was made, or uh, I'm sorry, Frontier was made by Imperial. All this is, is, and I don't know the exact steel, but I know it's carbon steel. It's probably, oh, it's probably like 1095, maybe 1085. We're starting to get a little bit of a burr. This stuff's a little harder than I give it credit for. There we go. We don't have much of a wire edge, but it's still there. Now, <clears throat> you guys can see, hopefully, the bevel that I'm putting on that. And it's a little bitty bevel. You guys can still see the wideness of the bevel that I put up top. Re reshaped it. So, start on the other side. Hope you guys.
guys can see that okay. Sorry, sometimes I get caught up in sharpening and forget about the camera angle or that you guys are even here. I'm just focusing on what I'm doing. But if you guys watch how I'm sharpening right now, like I mentioned earlier, you, you will understand and see why that I recommend a longer stone. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's see here. Another thing when you're reprofiling, I doubt you'll be able to see this on camera. You might. But when a little girl scribbles, when you're reprofiling something, look at the very tip right there. You don't want one of your bevels way over here and the other one real shallow or vice versa or whatever. You want them to be symmetrical. Now, these final passes that I'm making here aren't to sharpen or to continue repair. I'm just refining what I have already done here. This thing could probably, I'll feel the edge here in a second, but this thing could probably be used as is. It's not freaking crazy sharp, but it's got a damn good edge on it. All right, so, yeah, that looks really good. You can see here, even as long as I've been doing this, I made a little bit of an oopsie. You can see right back here in the back where I thinned that just a little too heavy and that bevel comes in nice and it kind of tapers off right there, which that's all right. That'll come out in future sharpenings. It ain't no big deal. I mean, you're never going to miss a eighth inch of the blade back here. So if it was up here, I'd be concerned about it. But that's the reason I say check progress often. Okay. Set this to the side. Now, this is another thing. When you guys switch from an oil stone to something that you're using water on or Dawn water, make sure you clean your hands and your knife lay it off and everything so you don't contaminate this is where I was wiping it off this side's clean okay and I used alcohol by the way right there so we're going to set that rag to the side and grab another one let's see grab this guy here now, where did I do it? There it is. I'm going to kind of combine two videos in one here. If I can find that stone. What the hell did I do with it? Oh, I found it. Y'all remember this guy, that Washita that I glued back together? Told you guys I would uh, 
show you how this thing cut and I mean it cuts amazingly Hell, we may just leave the edge on it from this stone but th this thing right here I've I've had several washitas in my time of sharpening and I've never had a washita cut this quick this is a badass stone So you guys can already see a metal streak right there just from that first pass. Some of you guys are probably wondering why I'm going from a core stone to a core stone. Um, that silicon carbide is a coarse synthetic. So it's the same way with diamonds. That synthetic SIC stone or silicon carbide, whichever one you want to call it, you can see the metal streaks right there. Um, it cuts, that's it and it leaves a scratch pattern similar to what a diamond would leave well arkansas stones a lot of people think washitas aren't arkansas they think it's some magical mythical creature and this isn't arkansas it's just a washita stone it's the coarsest of the arkansas line but they cut and they polish at the same time because it is an evaculite See, the vaculite, its grain structure, it still may be coarse, but it's like the tops of your knuckles. It's rounded. A silicon carbide over here is like your fingers sticking straight up. It's just really coarse, and it, therefore it puts more of a bite and more of a tooth on your edge. Pretty daggum sharp, just considering we use two stones. See what we got. Now that thing would be ready to go right there. There's a lot of people give me shit over cutting paper, but cutting paper, and I've mentioned it, mentioned it on here before. If you cut paper, you can listen to the sound. If it's a really you know pairing sound that means it's real coarse um, and if it's quieter that means it's sharper see the paper is audible when you sharpen it because it's so big see listen now if you go to cut this little piece of paper it's quieter It's sharp, but it's not it's not where I want it yet, so we're gonna keep going. We'll 
we'll do my damn soft and see where that gets us. Now the feedback that you get from a soft is completely different than you would get from a Washita. Washita is much coarser. You can feel it a lot better. A soft, you can still feel it real good, but it's, it's still got that little bit of a grab to it. But at the same time, oh yeah, that thing's keen. But at the same time, it's smoother. Don't flick the tip of your edge off the stone like I just did. I do that occasionally. My little girl is trying to come in here. Oh yeah, that's good and sharp. See the, see the difference? Listen to the sound. See how much cleaner it cut through it? That's what we're looking for right there. Definitely. If you guys can see it there. Definitely shaving sharp. So, I'm going to let this be at that. And we used three stones. Um, and this right here is, you know, usually what people had back when, you know, and if you had a soft Arkansas, you know, you were in good business. But a lot of people just had, a, you know, a sheet to use, and that was it. Um, or even a soft, like I used to, like I started out with. But these things didn't, these uh, silicon carbides and, this man-made abrasive didn't come into effect till later. I'm probably going to say late 50s, mid to late 50s, um, maybe even earlier. But uh, you just had three stones, a simple little $10 uh, flea market knife. And you can see that we, we transformed this edge dramatically. It's even got more of a tip on it now. Is you can see a little bit of a gleam right there. Definitely more of a slicer. Let's see here. Leather. Oh, yeah. Definitely good and sharp. It'll cut leather like that. 
can't, that's floppy right there. That was going to be a stone holder for somebody. I'll just cut another one out. I got plenty of that stuff. Anyway, there you go. Bevel relief and a sharpening we finished on a soft Arkansas. Definitely shave hair and you just seen it cuts leather. So, you guys have a uh, great evening. Take her easy.